Hey guys, we're here! Woo! Woo! Yeah, yeah. How do I flip this back? I don't know, Pat. <laughs> you stop it you just stopped it. it. Now you flipped it. It is. It's real tough. I don't like it. That's why I'm here at a retro gaming convention. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We're back. Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Woo! Yes. Howdy. My name is Pat Condry. This is my partner, Ian Ferguson. Ian. How are we doing? We doing okay? Yeah. We glad to be back? The heart of the retro gaming scene is Portland. We're so happy to be back here, and you're having fun. I see a Blockbuster hat. Woo! Did I, did I compete with you at yeah. the Saturn Bomber? I, I won one. I didn't, I didn't qualify to move forward. <laughs> Come on, more. You're a buster. <laughs> I did play as Mylan as my character. You're no good. I, I wanted Higgins, unfortunately. It was rigged. It was rigged. Oh, are we finding deals out there? We're happy yeah. to be back? Deals and deals? Deals and deals? I don't know that there's a lot of... Well, I mean, there's a, lot, there's a lot of appropriately priced product. I don't know that there's any. I don't know that there's any deals to be had. Um, I was gonna wear a special shirt today, but I ordered it, and unfortunately, it's a small, and I can kind of squeeze in a small, but I don't want to look like a, a Hoboken bouncer at a bar. Why did you buy a small? I did, and I got a large. I shipped me the wrong one, unfortunately. So it's know. the Tommy Tarico tweet against me. Uh, <laughs> I can't read it, Ian, if you want to read it. Do you want to read it? I mean, I guess I can do that for you. Uh, yep, nothing but a jealous, lying fraud who anointed himself the gatekeeper of retro. Uh, parentheses, yet knows little before the NES, and parentheses. Uh, he has a horrible reputation in the community at this point. When Amico is a success, he'll be the colleague... This is longer than a normal tweet. This is a joke. Uh, he'll be the Coleco Chameleon of retro YouTubers. Looking forward to it. All right. Let's give it up for Tommy. All that came to pass. All that came true. Uh, I, sh I should probably sell these for charity, but I don't have the one right now. So we're going to be talking about, speaking of the Amico U, there is a Kickstarter coming out, or it's actually out, called the Udo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a mobile-based platform, a full console, and a handheld device. And it's interesting. And before you all jump off the ledge, I don't hate this idea. I do not think it's a terrible idea. It's just whether or not I think it's going to be successful. I like it less. Okay. So, how does it work? We can watch the Kickstarter uh, video. I have it ready to go. Oh, we'll, we'll play the Kickstarter here. You can get a feel for it. Here. <laughs> Oh, wow! Okay, that was not good. <laughs> Are you ready to take mobile gaming to a whole new level? Meet the UDo console, a handheld device that turns mobile gaming into active play. Connect it and explore. Move the UDo console and your character moves with you. The AI motion detection recognizes physical gestures and makes playing active, immersive, and super fun. Since the vibration of the sword as it cuts through the air, or the flow of the brush as it touches the canvas. With a breakthrough in HD haptics, playing you do has become a fully immersive experience. Forget boring games at home, you can play literally anywhere. At Yudu, we're here to improve quality of life for your kids. With the Yudu console, we empower empowering kids to move off the couch and have fun in a way that they love. We're transforming their inactive gaming experiences into something that is active, social, immersive, and fun like never before. Get blown away by the ultra-crisp display, colorful LEDs, smooth trackpad, magnetic charger, trigger button, please button, motion sensors, and having vibrations. Everything packed into a sleek design that is robust and water repellent. In the UDo Games app, you'll find all the experiences. Everything from our open world adventures and sandbox games to artistic mini games and courtyard classics. And the best thing is, there are many, many games on the way. I know what you're thinking. Yes, you can play too. You do is all about making kids and families happy. Hey, Asbjorn, how's the project going? We're almost there. We soon the with J.K. Simmons. And with our experienced team of professionals from all over the world, we have ensured that your kids will get amazing play adventures and discoveries. Join the journey and be the first to get the Yudo experience. 
With your help, we'll be able to develop even more games for your kids. Early bird baggers will of course be rewarded with a huge discount on your console and a free subscription period in the YouTube Games app. That's awesome! Now it's your turn. Yeah. Check out our crowdfunding page and order now. Okay, cheesy, very cheesy video, but it got the basics. So this is a gaming platform that's subscription based. You're gonna get a suite of games. A suite of games um, with this. So you have a lot of things going on here. You have augmented reality stuff. Where you're walking around or like in your house. There's like a tracking thing to find ghosts or whatever they're doing. There's motion things, two players like baseball. Um, the controller. You have water resistancy. Uh, what's that? Water resistancy. They yeah, make sure you know it's good drop in a puddle. Yeah. Uh, looking at the controller, you have LED lights on the top. We've seen that before somewhere. You have a display that's small and just to like. This is like a, you know, an RPG game showing you stuff on there. Uh, you have a little D-pad, trackpad, HD haptics, and it'll probably do different sorts of, uh, what are you looking like that for? Oh, no, my God. <laughs> Some sort of uh, <laughs> sensory feedback, and then on the back of it, where's the back? There is a squeeze and a trigger on the squeeze back. Squeeze them. So there's like a, a, a trigger for your finger, and there's a squeeze thing. So you get like, looks like six buttons, and you get motion on this. Uh, there, there it is, there's the back here. And you have a charger, like the old like Wii controllers and stuff like that, motion sensors. Okay, so this is gonna cost, on the Kickstarter, this is gonna cost, they already, uh, they already uh, reached their goal, I think. Here's the good news about this, for Ian Tears It Apart. This is on Kickstarter, which means they have working a working prototype. You're not allowed to do this stuff on Kickstarter unless it's a working prototype. That's the good news about this. Um, so this is going to cost, let's see, that's the friends pack. A euro is actually worth less than a dollar right now, slightly. But this is going to cost a hundred, uh, let's see, early burn, hundred and forty dollars. You get a Uta console and you get uh, 12 months of the subscription free there for a hundred and forty the first year. Uh, then it's usually going to be two hundred dollars, uh, which I guess would include probably a free subscription for the first year. So that's what you're looking at here. So for hundred and forty bucks you get, you get the, the console, which is the controller really. Uh, which is going to be probably, a, I'm guessing, a mobile app that you install. Uh, and then you're going to get the charging cable, the wrist wrap, and 12 free months free for the games. Okay, I know where you want to go with this. This is nicer, than, this is what the Amigo probably should have been. Yes, because we're talking about immersive interaction. You actually see people interacting in a couple of games, like sure. playing a two-player game outside. When J.K. Simmons is playing baseball. With his yeah, J.K. Simmons. <laughs> or they're like walking around together, like friends walking around together, experience something with AR, like Pokemon Go, right? You walk around, you can experience stuff together. Um, so that's the, the, you know, what I like about this. There's only though two games announced right now, which gives me a slight pause. This is supposed to, this is supposed to uh, launch in April. So like this is gonna be going to production probably by end of the year, early next year, right? Yeah. You know, so like that's 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 the thing was like what? How many games are finished? We saw a handful, five or six. Uh, but here's the ones that they're touting here: uh, Quest of Aoki, your first big adventure starts with Quest of Aoki, where you access the parallel universe. Uh, Aether uh, is that one of the Infinity things in, in uh, Infinity Stones? A place on the edge of collapse. Okay, whatever. So you walk around probably outside, you see enemies with AR. And you bonk it. You bonk them with your sword, you get little power ups. It's probably gonna be a deep experience. It's probably gonna be something like playing like Ring Fit, you know, like something that simple, but you're gonna swipe and do things and combos, maybe, I don't know, get potions. And then you get, so that's all right, that's fine. And you get juice box, which I think it's a cute little dancing rhythm thing where you wave your arm. As, as they drop the notes. You go and you make the juice. You make the juice. It's, a, it's cute, it's a rhythm game. So the issue I have is that there's only these two games being shown. Um, I'll go lower this a little bit. So it's just a simple little reaction game. Maybe kids will do this outside. I don't know if there's a two player mode. At least you're getting some fresh air. Uh, there's someone playing basketball in the background there. Uh, I, I, there's somewhere in Scandinavia. Right now, it looks like. All right. <laughs> Great. Uh, it's a simple game. Here's, here's, a very simple game. Here's the issue. We don't know how many games and what the quality of these games are going to be to sustain something like this. Like once this launches, they say they have partners, but like, mm -hmm. like who are they partnering with? I've heard of um, people's partnerships before. <laughs> 12 months is usually $10 a month. 
So if you look at other things like Apple Arcade, what, $5 a month? $5. This, this is more than that, and that's what kind of scares me, because the Apple Arcade stuff is highly curated. It's Apple throwing money, though, around. Um, this is double what Apple Arcade is. These are all just for, obviously, this platform, for the Ubuntu platform. Yeah, I mean, I, so here's, here's where I see problems coming in. One, I don't think you're going to convince enough developers to make games for this platform, and I think it's going to be harder for them to do that even than, say, something like the Amico. It's going to be, one, such a closed system, and two... Lightsaber game. And two, if they're using the uh, motion controls, it's likely going to be harder to port the games elsewhere, so it's a double risk for them. They spend the yeah. time on developing these games and no one buys them, uh, they can't really take that work elsewhere, whereas Astro Smash could conceivably be on uh, anything. No, well, it couldn't be. No, absolutely. No, I, no it couldn't I, be on the Switch. You have to. You yeah. gotta be, yeah. Uh, um, so that's the thing, is like, these are all games where you have to look at your phone, like that's your screen, or the tablet, the ghost thing. It's too much. And then swing, I don't think it's too much. The issue is that you'll need this platform because you can't swing a phone and look at the phone. Like, you need a phone and the you know what I mean? So they couldn't be ported to Apple Arcade. Do you want some interpretive dance? <laughs> I'm, I'm making juice. They're making, uh, making the juice. But you see, like, there's like a pitching game here, there's, there's the juice game, there's the ghost. The ghost thing actually looks interesting because they're in a house looking around. And yeah, but I mean, that's all, that's all uh, wishes and hopes and dreams. Uh, I'm just saying, in theory, if it works, that could be a fun little activity. You're in the house. You're seven years old. You want to find a ghost. That's what I'm talking about. Sure. The, the goals of the chart. What up? Man, Amico's just ruined your, your, your outlook on this stuff. Uh, a goal it's, it's gimmicky. It's gimmicky. It's way too closed of an environment. Uh, the game looked like well, it garbage. Well, it has garbage. to be closed. That's a garbage. That's well, an Amico quality game patch. But if it's closed, then it's actually, these are exclusive games. Like that, you gotta get that. These are actually exclusive. I'm just saying, no they're cares. exclusive. I'm just saying, these are actually exclusive games. That's it. Collect for it? Oh, yeah. There won't be any physical products for this. Um, the goal is to put 100 games on. So here's the thing. Uh, I have an issue with, with the price after the first year. Um, you spend 140 bucks for the first year, you get how many games? If it's like 20 games, okay. I have an issue then with it paying $10 for it after that. That's, that's my concern about this. How many more games will come out? If this is a moderate, moderate success, how do you justify that every month unless these are like games coming out like two or three a month, like that regularly? Because they're not going to be very obviously intense games, most of these. They're not going to be like, you know, going to be mobile depth games where mobile in terms of symbol. Right. That's what I mean. So they're going to be bad. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean bad. Like little RPG that. No, no. Game, games that people are making for this are going to be bad. Okay. I'm willing to give it a fair shake until we see more of the games. But that's. Uh, this is what I also like about it. I'm not sure about the video. This, these are all like, this company is filled with young blood. I don't, it's not an ageism thing, but from technology, you need young people driving a lot of these companies that have fresh new ideas, at least, because if you have stagnant old ideas, technology just passes people by, as we've seen. With another concept, where it's like, you need fresh infusion of ideas, and that's what I like about looking at the backgrounds of these people. Like, these are not older people getting into this. So, I'm not saying this to be a success, but at least they're coming from an area of new thought and not, we're not thinking it's 1981 anymore. Um, I think, honestly, oddly, I think this is something that could maybe do better with, uh, partnerships. Uh, what, what was this? That was the handshake. Oh, okay. It's partnership. <laughs> uh, if you made it look a little bit cuter and attached it to something like Pokemon Go, we mean cuter, like like make the colors different. Well, smaller, less of a digital corn cob. Smaller. It's it's a it's palm sized. Like well, that. How much smaller? You need the squeeze and the trigger. You squeeze the that's, trigger. Like a big, that's a soup carrot. A soup carrot? A soup carrot. Who knows in the audience what a soup carrot is? No one does. I made it up right now. It's oh, it's like five people know what a soup carrot is. Well, I mean, it's the right size for soup. Yeah. yeah. What? So it's a horse, horse carrot. It belongs in the museum. Okay, I lost it. They're really big. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, who here has, does anyone have kids out here that are into like anything AR apps, that, you know, augmented reality apps? Yeah? Do they go outside and like look at the stuff? Or? Honestly, he plays Pokemon Go a crap load, so he might actually enjoy something. He like might. This, but I have to agree with Ian that 
I don't necessarily think that any of these games are really going to be something that will grab his interest. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the issue. There's, we don't see enough of anything in this, yeah. vi in this video. So, like, there were Dragon Quest, like, uh, games that they made for the Wii where you use the remote as, like, a sword. If you did a partnership like that, people might think it was more exciting if you, if you partnered with Pokemon Go. But I think at the end of the day, people are going to look at it as an unnecessary accessory and go back to playing the, stuff the, the simpler way. Yeah, here's the problem. It says, just like Apple Arcade, we aim, we aim to get 100 plus games to the Voodoo Games aim. Apple, sure. over the coming years. So if, say if it launches with only 10 or 12, is that going to sustain them to get to year two and three if you blow through all the games in like a couple of months with your kids? Well, if they keep providing experiences like Juice Box, maybe. I'm, I'm bullish on Juice Box. Why are you bullish on Juice Box? Who here play Juice Box with your kid? Come on. I got three people. Oh, come on. That's not appropriate here. Keep it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, I saw a picture of someone next to an active volcano with the uh, you do. You think you could scroll back up to the What? Game? There was an active volcano yeah, with the you do? You're not you're not trolling me, right? Is it like, here? Okay, just yeah. wait a second. Wait a second. I do like that you're seeing kids promote. <laughs> oh there was. Oh my god, there was. I just missed that. Was that was that they're actually there or yes. that's the reality? Yes. You can't miss it, Pat. Just wait. Oh let's see. They're outside, they're okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a weird one. Uh, you don't want to get toxic fumes. They should put a disclaimer. Don't do you do next to active volcanic activity. That would not be garden okay, playground, uh, not the volcano. Okay. I want to throw this out there too. Uh, they're really pushing the outdoor focus. Most people won't. Most people will not play VR unless they're completely alone because it's an embarrassing <laughs> weird scenario to be watching. It's, an, it's AR, not VR. Yeah, well, I know. This looks. It still looks ridiculous. You play Pokemon Absolutely Go, they're ridiculous. ridiculous. They look yes, ridiculous. but they're not swinging shit around, man. They're like, it looks like they're texting. Okay. So people are pretty self-aware if they're looking like an idiot playing Pokemon Go, and a lot of them just don't care. Well, would a six-year-old sure. six care to look no. playing baseball? Would they care? Six-year-olds? Would they get teased by their friends? I wonder if they got. Yeah, right? Did they, they get. Here's the question. They're going to kick a ball around the field. They're going to get scared. They're going to eat worms. Did they get any mysterious, uh, mysterious taxpayer grant money to do this in Europe, like a certain other console? That's what I don't want to know. That's the million dollar question. They get some grant money to uh, get this done. I actually think Voodoo nailed it here. Yeah, I have no idea. Nielsen, Brandon Image Lead Ad. Is it co-op or coop? Let's go with coop. It's like, like chicken. <clears throat> it's like Pokemon Go on steroids. <laughs> a cool combination of digital and physical play. Well, it is physical. And you're walking around. You're walking that around. man pissed out that statement in 20 seconds without thinking. <laughs> That's why we didn't have the adult uh, advisor on this panel. If you, you know, that's fine. I'm going to make use of it. Parental advisory is... Uh, yeah, I really. If you say something is like something on steroids, you have thought no here's, time about it. Here's the problem. This is a this is a gaming app at its heart with the controller that comes with it. Um, yes. You have to push the games to the forefront. We, we saw only two demos on here: the Quest game and then my favorite Juice Box. Like you have to show the lightsaber game. You have to show more of the. I think the Ghost game actually is really interesting. If it's, you're walking around the house, you have to track it down with some Are you on Halloween? Like most it's, it's October. You the ghost it's shot October. Uh, but it looks like there's only icons for about 12 games here. If you look, there's a magic one. Well, what is that? Sh shopping? It's a voxel sort of game. Like a box, like, there's a juice box. I'm that aware is. of another system that said they were going to launch with a lot of games. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking about Wii U? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> It didn't. He was holding a tablet. Yeah. they holding. Well, you get you get the app. You only it's exclusive. You got to get on the plan. I have. I, I can I can take you to Luna Video Games and show two you locations. the free two locations and show you the free bit where you can find all sorts of other games that had an unnecessary <laughs> app attached to them or yeah. our controller. Yes. How about the, the Wii Rackets from two thousand seven? Or the no the the U Draw tablet that they tried oh. to do on there. The, the the balance pad. Everyone thought, oh, this little okay. gizmo is gonna no. It's not. It's dumb. What price would this work at? This was like fifty dollars only. With the, with some of the games thrown in? $1.99 with a triple stack from Burger King. <laughs> do they do triple stacks at Burger King? Oh, Wendy's does triple stacks. Uh, I don't know, Burger King, well, I think they used to. I haven't eaten at Burger King since like 2007, so I don't know. I got Impossible Whopper a couple years ago, it was pretty good. 
all right. So is that all we got in the Udu? I was, I was, I, 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 I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for those kids. They're not at least, you know, they're people new to the industry, it looks like. So I think it's Ian's jaded at this point. See, that's, that's really the sad part. I'm not about. jaded, but there's uh, no hook for it to me. I think there's a hook. It's, I think they're, they're priced out. It's just, it's just I think waggling it's and walking. Will it be released? Will it be released? Well, it's, there's a production schedule, and th th these are prototypes being used. Well, will it be released? <laughs> you'd hope? <laughs> like, you'd hope. Looks like it entered into some contest, award-winning design for Scandinavia. I mean, it's just a controller. Here's the good news. It's just a controller. they buy a table at that contest? It's a controller. They didn't put together a weird console to do it. This is going to be a lot cheaper to make than a, than a game console. That's the good news. It's just an app and a controller. Like, this is the avenue you'd want to go for something like this. If it does come out, there's a kind of put it in a plastic shell and say it's worth $100,000. I mean, maybe. <laughs> uh, Gamma prototype now finalized. So there I, you go. I, I, got, I got one question for you. Sure, sure. Uh, how much have you invested? Ten thousand? Uh, I, I have to disclose legally. Twenty thousand. I, I might have gotten gotten a gondola ride with the CEO. Uh, a gondola ride. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. I have to disclose that to the FTC right now. I have an investor ten thousand dollars a year into Udu. Yeah, I'm all in on this. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna become an Udu only channel. Uh, starting uh, in two weeks, once we hit November. You it's it's you do. You do? You do. He said it right in the video. It's you do. <laughs> you do it. Don't, don't, don't you, you do it, Don't Doug. you accent shame me. You do. That's fine. You um, do. Why do I say gondola ride? I mean, this is funny. Imagine, go, imagine being uh, s s swayed over to the side of investing by a nice gondola ride, something with a big long stick. Or a sway, like the sway button on the like like Or swaying like double dragon, tiger L C. All right, well that's it for uh, the, the you do. Who here thinks this is at least an interesting product? Anyone? There's, all right, like 20, 12. Okay, bad. 12%. Those two are out, they know it's a bad, bad idea. They're like, uh, we have uh, not been sold on. They're using sustainable practices for the environment. So they, like, they keep pushing water repel, makes me realize that like, they, I guess rain, or sort of kids being they, the They rain. really want people to be playing this outside by a riverbank. Okay. You know, like, and apparently volcanoes. And volcanoes, I mean, yes. And is a liquid technically at some phase. If it's, if it's water resistant, maybe. Maybe you can go to uh, 800 degrees at that point. And I feel like that's dangerous too. Like, what if they are playing it by a riverbed so they can take advantage of the water resistance and they stumble on a rock, trip, sprain their ankle, uh, and bash up uh, their knees? Haven't people died playing Pokemon Go or been injured? Launch, launch the thing into the, the you know into a, a bear infested woods and then they go after it. Look at that wiggle. Look at that wiggle on the, on the half. The right, ground. right to an active wiggle. volcano. Babies just running right after it and jumping into them volcanoes. Now that's gameplay. That is, that is it's real action. All right, it's like a little danger. Is that it on the you do? That's it. We're gonna do a. Uh... Oh, all right. You're moving on. You look at the the floor is yours. You want to do more? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, so what are we doing now? A little Q and A. We're gonna do we're gonna do a Q and A and uh, Q and A. Uh, we have we have we have a line set up here at the mic that people want to do. It's always like breaking the seal. Who's gonna be the first one? Who's gonna have the courage? And then after that, we can have more people. Line them up. Line them up. It's a good there. hat. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, question for you two. Who will end the blood rain, Bloodline's reign of terror? Roman Reigns has been running roughshod for far too long. Um, I haven't watched WWE, but Roman Reigns has been champion for like three years at this point, <laughs> on and off, it seems like. And supposedly it's a good faction with him and the Usos. Yeah. Um, is it Uso or Uso? <laughs> Usos. <laughs> uh, hole in one, Barry Darso. He's going to do it. Yeah, I was thinking about him the other day. Um, he's going to invade the WWE and, and he's take it home. Yeah. Is he your boy stable? I, no, Barry Darson is not going to spot my, my boy stable. Thanks for the rest of the question. Yeah, thank you. You want a podcast sticker? Yes, I want one. Let's advertise that. Do it for the video. There you go. Advertise <laughs> Who's next? It's coming up. I saw hands raised. I guess you can yell out if you, if you don't want to make it to the mic. Uh, hello, long time listener of the podcast. Uh, Thank you. I'm just wondering, uh, are you as bewildered as me that they're still making these weird like Kickstarter game consoles? Yes. <laughs> I'll not be bewildered by it because like it's a huge market, so people are always going to try. Okay. I, and... I always thought that it kind of just died after the Ouya. So. Well, 
I think it's tough for these to get any sort of market penetration. And I think as, with every single one that comes up, people realize that they're not going to have the next Wii, they're not going to reinvent the wheel. And I just, I am kind of surprised that people keep trying it. And there have been some interesting little things out there that I've seen, like the little screens that connect together and like they can play different games on them and whatnot. But I just don't think anything is going to have the impact that I think the creators hope it does. It's like, I don't see you do here taking over the world. Well, the acquisition cost to get customers would be gigantic to get the word out. Unless you partner with like some some influencers that are like, you know, like, like children influencers, I guess, for this sort of stuff. Kids to get sounds kids like a child soldier. <laughs> what? <laughs> Children influencers? Yeah, there's kids that have billions of followers that on sure. I mean, YouTube. I guess. You know, they've got that. I think that's what it would take. That's the problem. It's like even it's even it was, I don't think it's priced effectively. The first one that gets Earthworm Jim Four on it is gonna that'll, that'll be the successful one. This is almost this is almost something where you have to price it lower to get people in and take almost a loss on the hardware to get the subscription going and build the subscription base. That's really where the money is, to me. It's not a hardware play, it's, it's, a, it's a better model than the Nico by far. But it's, the cost is still, I think, too high to get people into it, especially kids. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that's about it. Thank you. Thanks. Howdy. Hello. Uh, so I had a question that uh, involves difficulty settings in video games. Okay. Uh, um, it's pretty divisive, it seems. Uh, some people think that difficulty settings making games super easy versus super challenging um, robs a game of its artistic talents, if you will. Um, I'm of the viewpoint that uh, difficulty settings should be treated more as accessibility settings. Uh, I, not that every game ought to have them or should have them, uh, uh, but they, they should at least try to have them. I, I, I think they should be there. Um, you know, most of the time I set my games to easy, the, the, the exceptions would be like if I'm playing, um, you know, like a horizontal or vertical shooter, I'm usually playing out on normal or hard because, you know, that's why I'm specifically playing the game. Um, I, 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 you know, I think it always comes down to the example people want to talk about is Dark Souls. That's usually where it goes. I think an easy mode on that diminishes, to me that changes the game pretty drastically from its intent, but I don't think that means it shouldn't be there. I just don't know that I personally would, ha and like I said, I like easy games, but I feel like that's such a core of it, the, the loop of the gameplay, learning the patterns, the grinding, um, I think it would be a different experience, but I don't think that means it shouldn't be an option. Okay. That's yeah, that's artistic that's intent, if they feel like it doesn't destroy their vision of it, because they're artists. You're making a game, it's art. Yeah. If that's part of your vision, that you want it to be super difficult, then that's your game. You're just going to obviously shut out a portion of the population that's not going to try it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, of the modern AAA developers, which one do you think is the most problematic, and which one do you think is the least, I guess? Like, we've heard about shit happening with, say, Activision, so maybe leave Activision and EA out of the conversation, because let's face it, who doesn't, who here doesn't know the horrible things they've done? But aside from them, is there anything going on right now that you think is quite objectionable, slash, what do you think is really great going on right now? I was just also, playing, is there, any, is there any good AAA? Uh, well, I don't think Capcom's particularly problematic right now. Yeah, not really. Street Fighter VI looks pretty good. Character design is great. They got all sorts of input on the character design. I think it's fantastic. Uh, and it looks really good, and yeah, um, real diverse roster, you know, coming for, for Street Fighter VI. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, I think you could just, I mean, it's, it's your choice. You can pick Activision, Blizzard, uh, you know, Ubisoft, EA. Oh my god, Ubisoft. Yeah. Ubi dooby doo. I don't know. Ubi doo and Ubi, sitting in the tree. I don't know that I could single out one, but I think Capcom's probably okay right now. Yeah, at least not Nintendo or anything. I think Nintendo's Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo has been mean since the day they started making video games. But yeah, also, there's always rumblings, but they also seem to keep under wraps anything that happens there, so who knows? That's true. I, knows? It, 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 do, it doesn't make them any less charming, though, does it? No, sure. Also, can I get a sticker? Yeah, of course. Sure. <laughs> you, want, you want a limited sticker? Limited. Oh, oh yeah, too. You gotta, you gotta do the sound. No, you don't. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Hi. 
Hey guys, um, question for you. Walking around this event, have you noticed any, I guess, shocking trends? Uh, like, shocking trends? Like for me, for example, I've noticed a lot more grading companies out here, and I've also noticed that you can slab a Breath of the Wild Switch version and sell it for $3,000, apparently. Well, you can try. <laughs> yeah, I know someone's right. gonna buy it, right? <laughs> well, WADA was like the main, one of the main sponsors here three years ago. Yeah. And so they're back, and Heritage is here, and then CGC is getting into as a competitor. Well, I welcome the competition, because uh, anyone's going to be better than Wada at this point. Um, so, no, I'm not shocked by it. It's just a lot's happened in three years, obviously. When we, the last time we were here, a lot of the weird crap we didn't know about was starting to happen. Like the Pawn Stars game was like early 2020. Uh, no, well, it was early 2019. It was weird by then. That's right. It just got weirder and weirder. Um, and then it just sort of spiraled out of control by 2020. Uh, yeah. I've noticed a lot of Game Boy box and stuff. <laughs> See, yeah, that's not like Game Boy boxes. Uh, it, it's just there's a lot more of it out there. I, I'm just looking for loose stuff, and everyone brought box. Oh, do it all. There's always next year. Yeah, but it costs so much more. <laughs> that's true. All right, thanks, guys. Yep. You want a Danny sticker? Danny yeah. approved sticker? Yeah, of course. See if I can slab it and sell it. Danny approved. <laughs> Ultimate Nintendo.com. Hello. Uh, so I have a bit of a food inspired question. Now. Yeah. Food inspired? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay, I thought you said something it's, else. Okay. I'm food. A, I'm a food related, re related question inspired by uh, listen, re listening to Extra Napkins. Oh, thank you. Listening to a bit of a contentious argument between Ian and his co host on that podcast. And I want to ask Pat. Pat. Do you wash your rice before you cook it? <laughs> I don't need a meme for another podcast here. Um, is this a controversy? Yeah, do you, do you wash your rice or do you not wash your rice like a horrible person? <laughs> wow, this is a controversy. I don't want to step into this mind field here. I don't know what the right the rice. You wash the rice. You, you wash the rice. I don't wash ever, your rice. I mean, it, it has nothing. It, it's not even like a cleanliness thing. I'm not being crazy. Into this. I mean, in theory, you boil it, right? So, like, it would... It's so, not washing it! But, I mean, like, that would kill the germs. Would it, would it, would it, would it has nothing to do with germs or cleanliness. What's it doing? You have to rinse it. You have to rinse off the I don't cook rice, so... I'm rinse it off! <laughs> don't redirect your anger at someone else at me. I don't care if you no, shove I've rice up, this, your, up your nose. I don't care what you do with it. It's going to be goopy and not fluffy. All right. Thanks for bringing this up. This is great. You great, great at the retro gaming expo talking about fucking rice. rice. Thank you so much. You're going to win. Thanks so much. You're going to win. Thank you. You don't get a sticker. You get nothing. Good day, sir. So uh, I like to walk around my house and constantly say the words big, big news. So, big, big. Yeah. So, there we go. My question. So um, video game is... Most epic celebration when you beat a game. What was the game? What was the celebration? Did you chuck a beer? Did you run around the house? How old were you? What was the, what was the biggest celebration? That's a, actually a better, better, better question. Oh, well, biggest celebration. Well, I beat Mike Tyson's punch at a bunch of a group of people when I was in, I was college age, probably home, then 20 or 19. Everyone was going nuts. It was on like a big screen, back a big screen. I guess, yeah, projection, a big screen in a basement. And I finally beat Mike Tyson. No one could believe it. I couldn't. It was like very tense. So that was pretty big. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of another one. Ninja Guy. This is a really good question, but I don't beat anything, so uh, I, I can't. I can't think of one. He beats people with bags of dirty rice. <laughs> no, I washed my rice. It has nothing to do with dirt. It's a, it's a fluffiness. It's to make it have a better texture. It's, Activate the rice. Yes. I don't. I don't. I'm an intermittent passing. I'm not doing rice. All right. Hi guys. What are some of your favorite uh, Sega Game Gear games? Favorite Sega Game Gear games? I like uh, Psychic World. That's a fun new one. Um, I like the Mickey Mouse Legend of Illusion. Uh, and I don't. I don't have a whole lot. Oh, I love Sonic. Uh, Sonic uh, Chaos. Yeah, I love that game. I don't know if I played through any game you remember. Whoa, start. I should start. He just there you go. I had a good celebration when I beat uh, Sonic Chaos uh, last winter because I was uh, sick with COVID and I got through it and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> All right.
Thanks. Hello. Hi. So. Oh, that's way too loud. <laughs> so, I was wondering, how do you think uh, video game preservation will be affected by capacitors like blowing and like systems, and as like the they age and systems are becoming like incredibly, like you know you can't use them anymore. How do you and, and like copyright laws and like how do you think that will affect? How do you think like the future of like retro video games will like be the, the future? Just video games um, in general. Well, it's all going to come down to can you play it on original hardware or not? That's the fundamental question. There's going to be ways to probably play any. I mean, there's ways to play almost every pre-existing game right now. It's just how authentic will the experience be? Or will that be lost over time? Yeah. Like we're gonna, or we're still gonna have vector. That's mainly the question. Yeah, we're gonna have vector arcade monitors 50 years from now to emulate how they looked originally in the 80s. Will there still be some around? Will be a way to, to capture that feel? That's really the question. Will <laughs> will we be able to play Atari 2600 games 50 years from now on an original console or not? Versus will it be an FPGA substitute for all these consoles? That's really the more fundamental question about preservation is that. I think consoles will be less problematic to upkeep, but I think monitors and things like that will be much, much harder to upkeep. So you may start to lose some of those. I think I think FPGA will go a long way to, you know, uh, to help that in scalers and things like that. But yeah, I think we may get to a point where some of these systems aren't easily or at all playable on the, yeah. the original way. It's going to come down to, will someone be able to repair an RCA Studio 2 like 100 years from now? Right. Be one left in the world working potentially, but, but I do think it's going to be a longer. It, it, like when you say 100 years, I think yeah, yeah because it's not just a long time. It's not like electronics are going to change overnight. Yeah, I mean these consoles still work that are 40, 50 years old. And honestly, if I have an Ozzy 72, shout out, they're out there in the anniversary. Like it'll still it'll still work. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Can I get a seat? Yeah. Yeah, sure. You want Danny approved? You want to see podcasts or cute mugs? What do you want? Uh, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Oldnintendo.com. Nice play. You go, you buy. Yeah, this one's uh, for Pat. So I personally like some of your uh, Halloween slash Christmas themed uh, punk videos, especially with the Santa Claus guy that tries to take your soul. Oh, uh, he took it, all right? Yeah. Yeah. So By the way, that could have been potentially the last NES punk episode. I was thinking about that. Oh. That'd be a weird way to go out where I'm just dead on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering. You would we maybe expect a punk video around this uh, Christmas season? I always like to do a Christmas one. All right. I did the who liked the Game Boy one last year? Anyone see it? Not even yeah, saw this. Why, why do I do it? Uh, <laughs> why do I? I don't know. The thumbnail was great. Okay. Why do I do 35 hours into these videos? 40 hours. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll do. I'll probably do a Christmas one. It, right. My schedule kind of works out where I can probably do one in theory, like these last three months of the year. I did that in 2019, I, where I did uh, Monster in My Pocket Combat with the EBGN, and I did. Uh, uh, one day before Christmas yeah, yeah. with the evil Santa. So okay. It worked out. Cool. Good stuff. Thanks. What's up, guys? Hey. Howdy. So, I really enjoy you guys talking about wrestling a lot in the podcast. And it's been something that I watched a lot as a child, but never really went and saw it. So I got really excited and had the toys and bought everything. But uh, I recently started working at an arcade bar that has amateur wrestling oh and it's like it's so much of a different experience to be there and to watch them set it up and it's almost like a you know it's like a big troop of people that all work together they have tournaments at your bar yeah the there's one tonight i'm going to work tonight. wow that's are they, are they like cash prizes or what no no so it's like a full-on troop of guys that they just do it girls, and they, they just go around doing like a fight it's up uh, blair alley and eugene huh like pinball alley so some of my favorite things I get to go yeah, okay. sell booze to people, getting drunk and have them yell at fucking wrestlers. All right, that throw, sounds throw awesome. Some side bets yeah, in no. maybe. Um, it's only it's only like hundred miles away. <laughs> okay, and seeing it live is definitely a one hundred percent different thing. So, I used to watch it in college a little bit. Much yeah. Cool. Is there any like amateur stuff in uh, down in Southern California? You gotta ask Frank that. Frank's the guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you mean amateur professional wrestling or amateur? Well, amateur it's wrestling? like yeah. I mean they got like chairs and. Oh, you're uh, talking about indie wrestling. I thought you meant amateur wrestling. Oh no, no. no. Oh. I was gonna say you're, yeah, you're, no, you're thinking. Like, I'm thinking. I picture a bar. People actually. Yeah, just like wrestling. a bar. <laughs> like on a tarp. Yeah, we did the bar. Wrestling. Okay, that's what you mean. Okay.
Okay, that's a lot different. I mean, it's <laughs> awesome, and you see it live, and you realize, I, I think, you know, on TV, you realize it's physical, but whether it's the camera or something like that, you don't, until you see it live and you hear it, you don't yeah. really realize how physical it is. Yeah, and they're still pulling out tacks and stuff out of people. Oh, yeah, like, it's nuts. It's crazy. All right. Can I get a sticker? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. You want Danny and Proof? Speaking of thumbs up, Danny and Proof. There you go. All right, so you guys are pretty well known for being very critical of things that you think deserve criticism, like WADA, Heritage, etc. When you're at a show like this, and maybe your booth is a couple booths down from those booths, like, what are the vibes on the show floor? Like, um, I can tell you because I got um, accosted by Danielle's friend uh, when I was setting up last night. I was witnessed by two people that were like waiting to like talk to me and maybe buy a book while I was setting up. And, it was a very interesting experience because it went exactly how I thought it was going to go, and they hit all the talking points they had. Or, oh, it's not, a, it's not a collapse; it's a correction. Oh, it's okay if people know each other and have relationships with each other. Um, this is a new market. But I'm like, no, it's not. And like, two people witnessed this. They were there. Where was, they were just like trying to save me because he would, this person would not leave my my booth for 25 minutes. I wish I recorded. It. But it came down to them asking, I think I should be trying to be friendly at first. I think I should, I should be in your podcast. You need an alternative point of view. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, you know, this, is this isn't 60 minutes or a d debate show. This is just, this is just what I do. I, we have an opinion. People listen to us because they like our opinions in theory. And that's it. And we're usually pretty spot on about this stuff from our experience. So that's it. So I got accosted three years ago by Danielle. Now we're friends. <laughs> All right, it's, uh, what, what time are we here till 3.15? We got three minutes. We got okay, yeah, we can do it. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. You over the Mets yet, Pat? What's that? Are you over the Mets yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's the edge of the stage? I mean, I'm, I knew they were going to, I knew this was going to happen. When, after they lost all those games, I knew they were not going to get out of the wild part. And my hard parts, I did. So, so real question. So, have you ever reached out to, talked to Danny Sullivan yet? About approving that sticker? Is no, but I, do Danny have, approved, I, Danny approved. I did purchase at this event in 19 or 18 a signed Danny Sullivan's Indie Heat signed by Danny with like a, a card with him, so I do have that. What about off road? Do you like that better? Which one? Off road better or worse than anything? Um, off road's better. I think so too. It depends what, what console, like the Super Nintendo ones are really good, they add all the extra tracks into it versus yeah, they the NES one. Yeah. yeah, but. Where Dan, but Danny Sullivan has an ending, like it actually ends. Where did that come up, the Danny Sullivan love? Like it, uh, we were sitting I mean, we, where we used to sit and record. Pat would always like look at his games and pick something random. And it was just, it was the line of sight game for him so many times that he just stopped looking and started using. Gotcha. Thank you. And the lore was born. <laughs> Hello. Hey um, someone had asked you a question on the over the anchor. Um, thing online and, and um, you didn't answer the question even though I asked because he had like dissed you after that and you're like I'm not giving you the answer but I've been wondering who is Frank? <laughs> who is Frank? Are you what, what is Frank? Is Frank is whatever you choose him to be. <laughs> is Frank just the, the smile of the stranger passing by? Is Frank the dude glistening off a leaf? on an autumn morning. He's the spirit of the sun in the early spring. Yes. Frank, Frank lives inside all of us. Frank, that's what Frank is. Wait, is, is Frank your uncle? It's not my uncle. Is that's what I'm saying. Why do people think he's my dad? It's so weird to call your dad by the first name. Like, it's just some people that do it. I just think that's bizarre. I mean, you're weird, though. So we'll, Thanks. Know, so we'll never know. Well, we got one minute left, so we have one last question. <laughs> no, thank you. I thought when the other gentleman was asking about the water games, it was very interesting. Did the guy happen to have any comments about the fact that they are now owned by a parent company that also owns Golden and has both the grading and the auction company under the same umbrella? So they're double dipping and a huge conflict of interest. Dipping dots. 
Oh, I thought the, I thought the company owns Golden owns, also owns CGC. Golden is also the Wild one. I, I thought it was PSA, but maybe I'm mixing it up. They're all they're all, it's an incestuous thing. Yeah, and then, yeah. by the way, the, and by the way, the person that was talking said that's fine. That's how all the collectible hobbies are. I yeah. said that's not ethical. So, so, so his argument was that all these uh, hobbies aren't ethical. I said no, no. I said the actors in them aren't ethical, <laughs> but like the hobby itself is fine. It's just the actors that turn it into a perverse thing. Yeah. That's what the you know. The, I, I, I just find it fascinating. We have a completely unregulated market. Where now a lot of the grading companies are owned by a parent company that also owns the auction site. That's yeah. freaking crazy. If it was a regulated market, it wouldn't be allowed. No, of course not. <laughs> we, they'd be all be in prison. So, <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's fine. Good times, right? <laughs> well, thanks for coming out. Thank you. Ian, thank you. I thank you. Enjoy the rest of the show. We're going to be doing signings. We're talking to you at Booth 205 which is right outside the arcade, closer to the wall by the Atari booth. We're going to be there in five minutes, so come by and say hi.